Dr. Tom Rosell live right now, 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. I am live in studio, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you on any subject that you have in mind. Perhaps you've had a problem, you've tried, you've applied. And guess what? You've come up with the same old, same old, nothing's working. Well, this is opportunity to find out what you can do about that specific condition without drugs or surgery. Love to talk to you about it. Answer your questions in any possible way that I can. 888 have several different things I'd like to talk to you about today, things that have been brought up in practice, questions that I've been asked periodically. Hope you'll find them interesting. I'm sure that you will, actually. And I think they're topics for ongoing discussion. You know, in the air of Obamacare, if you will, there's a absolute directive, and that directive simply is your health is in your hands. You must be proactive. You must learn as much as you possibly can ongoingly to make sure that you stay well. And you can do that in a lot of different ways. One, you can listen to this program every week, 12 o'clock on Sundays, and get my opinion, my viewpoint, and argue and fight with me if you like. You can go to rosellradio.com, and you can listen to past programs on a lot of different subjects. You can go to our website at rosellcare, and you could also write me, and I will answer you specifically at rosellcare.com. By the way, if you go into our website, you're going to find a listing of different events that we have coming up. Uh, for example, on April 20th, I will be on air with Dr. Stephanie Pina. We're going to be talking about the treatment of chronic disease you know, through acupuncture. We're going to talk about, on May 4th, family wellness and what that means. And then we're going to get into the last part of May. We're going to talk about carpal tunnel. And then in June, we're going to talk about sleep disorders. And then as we go through June, then we'll talk about summertime athletics and things that happen to you, just playing golf or tennis or walking around or any of those things. So we've got a whole line of upcoming events. But more importantly, in September, our main event, Ageless Health 2011, it's coming. And we want to encourage you to make sure that you put it on your calendar. September the 17th, it's a Saturday. We start early in the morning. It's a comprehensive look into wellness health care and how to change your life absolutely. This event will be a rock and roll event. We're always sold out, so don't hesitate. Uh, look for mailers. Look for the information on our website and listen to the program. But please don't hesitate. There's a limited number of VIP uh, seats available, and those are going to be fun because guess what? At the middle of the day, you get to have lunch with me and ask me questions and you get a copy of my book signed or if you already have a copy of my book, you will get the audio version or if you have that as well, then we're going to give you a copy of Dr. Evan Mladenow's book, Stressed, Stressed Out, Headed for Burnout. So take advantage of that and call our office at 703-698-7117. I have a promise that the registration forms will be online this week, but um, don't wait. It's coming up quickly, and we're going to be totally, absolutely sold out. So what are we talking about today? Several things, and we already have uh, callers lining up. I will take your calls today, I promise. There's something called polychlorinated biphenols, and what is that? Well, they're lovingly called PCBs, and these guys are persistent pollutions in our environment, and they have huge, huge consequences immunologically, your immune system suffers, and neurologically and endocrinologically. So we want to talk about that. So it's going to affect your organ systems, it's going to affect your nerves, and affect your immune system. So PCBs, or polychlorinated biphenols, as they are traditionally called, these are a category of chemicals. They're industrial chemicals, and they're used as historically coolants. They're uh, used to transfer heating agents and electrical transformers and so forth, and they also have been used in uh, microscopic uh, immersion of oils and uh, copy paper and oils that are used in cutting processes and ingredients that are in all kinds of pesticides. And guess what? In the Washington, D.C. area, with everybody trying to keep up with the Joneses and keep uh, their lawns the way it is, that's where we see so much of this. But there are runoffs in the streams, and they get into the air and the atmosphere. And it goes on, and they really are a problem. PCBs uh, fall into two very distinct categories. One category is considered, uh, I'll use the term dioxin, because of its structural and 
toxic similarity to some of the things that have been around for a, a long time. Dioxins, if you, if you roll back the clock into the 70s and so forth, are things that we know that cause cancers and cause all kinds of degenerative disease. Now, we need to break that down, and, and you know we're not going to get into the, te- the technical skew of this thing, but what you need to know about the effect of PCB contamination is it's been studied in, in many different populations, uh, and what we know is it, where it was persistent and is persistent today as uh, a dietary contaminant. How, how does that happen? Well, we just said it can get into the food system be- because of the... Uh, the using it as preservatives and sprays and growth enhancers and so forth. And there was a study sometime back, I think 1979, that was done in Taiwan, and it was done with over 2,000 people. And these folks became very ill after exposure to PCP-contaminated rice, rice bran, cooking oil. And they developed uh, the symptom, the primary symptom that they noticed was a hyperpigmentation. That means an increased... Uh, discoloration or coloring of the body and peripheral neuropathy now that means that the end nerves peripheral means distant neuropathy has to do with nerves and that we noticed that uh, there was pain and numbness and so forth that uh, took place and these people used this contaminated oil for about nine months and they weren't consuming necessarily a lot of it so here's some of the outcome. The first 39 children born to exposed mothers were all hyperpigmented. They had this exaggerated coloration, and of those 39 children, eight of those died. The, uh, the exposed individuals and their surviving offsprings are now in a, uh, an ongoing study to find out the end products of breakdown. But here we see something that a, a, over 20% of the study group had an issue. Now, that's significant. That's not only significant for a study, that's significant for you. So what we need to know about that is that it has dramatic effect on immune system. We, we see uh, kids who have been exposed to PCBs through their mothers. I mean, everything crosses over membranes, right? We see long-term, uh, long, I'm sorry, long-term uh, immune deficiencies. We see... Uh, an increased incidence of ear infections with uh, children that have been exposed to any kind of PCBs, and that's environmental. So if people live in areas and they're getting things that have PCBs, you know, we've got a problem. We have reduced numbers of white cells. So in adults and children, we begin to see lowered levels of white count. So that means your immune system, your ability to fight all kinds of things aren't, aren't working. The neurological deficits due to exposure to PCBs are, have to do with memory, has to do with mood, has to do with behavioral problems, and uh, then it goes on from there, and we can talk about you know, people with Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune problem of the thyroid. The thyroid antibodies and the anti-nuclear antibodies uh, begin to uh, show up where they hadn't been for, before, so we end up having problems dramatically, dramatically increases the incidence of lung and liver cancer and learning problems and memory and vision, and it goes on. Even with women, uh, huge levels of endometriosis that are associated with exposure to PCBs. Uh, those are the little tumors that women get. There's two types that women generally get. Endometrial tissue, which is a, a, a uterus-like substance. matter of fact, the tissue is almost identical. And the other one is fibroids, but this one is the endometrial tissue. And then we have menstrual problems, uh, huge clotting factors and, and cramping and so forth, and then reproductive uh, problems where women can't get pregnant. Uh, the increased risk uh, of diabetes goes up almost twice. So as we begin to look in our environment and the things that we're doing to ourselves, we begin to realize that we're taking ourselves out. We're causing significant amount of problems with the plastics that we have, with the environmental pollutions, with the runoffs, with the water that we're drinking that comes out of water reclamation uh, systems like we have in this area. Your water is basically enhanced because of uh, the sewage water that is refiltered and put back in your drinking water and also because of the runoffs of things that are coming out of the Anacostia and also the Potomac. The farms that are coming upstream from Maryland, all the, the junk that they spray in these things get into the groundwater and you have the end product of that. So when we know that and we know that you know mothers specifically have 
uh, an increased risk to their children, particularly when they uh, breastfeed if they've been exposed, the concentration of PCBs in, in breast milk resulting from daily exposure is significant. I mean, this is stuff that is amazingly well documented. Go into a uh, a publication called Environmental Medicine, and you will find pages and pages of references and research that has been done in all types and manner of diseases and functional disturbances. What you have to remember about PCBs is that they're fat-soluble, and they're persistent in a lot of different common food elements. And when that happens, and you eat a piece of meat, you eat a piece of fish, uh, anything of that nature, or anything that has fat from dairy and so forth, or any of the oils, they lock in the PCBs, and subsequently they're transferred to you. Uh, exposures can be reduced by avoiding a, a lot of these foods that have high PCB levels. And there's several uh, dietary sources that are highly available, things like chlorophyll and rice bran fiber and green teas and so forth. They increase the elimination of these things. That's one of the reasons that all of you should be drinking green tea as far as I'm concerned. And the stronger, the better in, in about three cups a day. If uh, the levels are high, uh, exposure reduction and toxin elimination uh, can be done very specifically, there are things that will get rid of uh, the PCB levels, but it is a problem. It's a significant problem. We are hurting ourselves, but remember, anything that is in plastic, don't. Anything that is contaminated, don't. Filter your, your water. Invest in a good water filtering system for your house. I don't care what anybody tells you. The water you're drinking around here is garbage. And you need to protect yourself. And don't go out and buy bottled water necessarily because simply because the plastic that you are drinking the water off will release the things that we're talking about. Now that you feel lousy about those things, let's answer some calls. Laura, thank you for waiting and holding. How can I help you? Hi, thank you for taking my call, Dr. Rozelle. I love you. I love your show. Thank you so very I'm much. I'm addicted to it. Anyway, I have two quick questions. Um, first one is that I have been testing my blood pressure, and I am really worried about it. I don't believe in medication. I, I never t took any blood pressure medication. I'm doing. I'm going by the book. I'm eating right i eat oatmeal and you know for this purpose and all the food that is really good for uh, high blood pressure Laura, what, it, what is the level of your blood pressure how high is it well it was one time i went to see a doctor it was 200 over 150 okay that's not good that's dangerous yeah okay. he told me you'll have a stroke and i was so scared yesterday i had it tested again it was 161 over 90 okay that's better obviously but it's still a little bit too high which obviously where you want to get Regardless of your age, you want it in the neighborhood of 130 or less on the top side, and you want your bottom pressure under 80 if possible. So here's a couple quick things I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you to do. Uh, one of the things that uh, needs to be done is you've got to you've got to make sure that your level of magnesium is high. Magnesium glycinate. Start with 250 milligrams of magnesium glycinate. Mm -hmm. Once a day, then increase it to twice a day, increase it to three times a day. Take it up till you have it. You're taking maybe five or six times a day. The only side effect to magnesium is a loose uh, stool. You might get a little diarrhea. If that's the case, you back it off. Laura, don't go away. I want to continue this because it's a really important question for a lot of people. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. I'm here at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you on any subject that you have in mind. Talking about a few things, PCBs, and coming up after the news, we're going to talk about a very interesting subject called epigenetics, or also called psychoneuroimmunology, why your disease may be starting in between your ears. You know, the body doesn't know the difference between an actual experience and one that you emotionalize. And as we talk about the work that we do, we visualize a metaphor called the triad of health, structural, chemical, emotional. And we often talk about the structural pieces, the injury and the biochemistry and the imbalances, but sometimes we don't get into the emotional makeup as much and how it really affects the body and how you actually can change anything, including your genetic makeup, and how you can get them to react one way or the other. So stay tuned for that and don't go away. I want to remind you that as... 
an ongoing sponsor. Thermography Centers of Fairfax is always there to serve you to determine whether or not you have inflammatory disease, pain patterns that are associated uh, with something other than what they can find on a physical level. Also, ladies, you know that thermographic imaging will show up cancer at many different levels, particularly breast cancer, five to eight years before it's visualized in mammography. Call Dareth Painter at 703-943-7248. That's 703-943-7248. Laura, are you still waiting? Yeah. Okay, hon, let's uh, talk about that. We've got a couple minutes, and what I want to get across to you is this. Your blood pressure at the level we talked about initially is dangerous. You have to get it down no matter what. Sometimes you have to work both ends of the spectrum uh, to begin to bring it down. But when it's that high, it tells me that your heart is having a really hard time pushing the blood through the, the vessels, and the vessels aren't relaxing after the heart is con done contracting. So this is what you want to try. You want to try magnesium, but magnesium glycinate to start with, and increase the levels. And you don't want to waste more than about a week or two to see if it's going to bring it down. That, if it's going to be successful, you're going to start seeing the blood pressure level drop down. The other thing that I would encourage you to take is go get a, a time-released niacin. And it's vitamin B3, but you want a time release. Otherwise, you're going to flush like crazy. And you'll take 500 milligrams once a day. Take it with your meals. It'll, it'll kind of modify the flushing. Those two things can help significantly to, uh, to bring your blood pressure down. If that doesn't do it, then you've got to start looking at acupuncture, which will do a significant uh, amount to bring your blood pressure down. You look at structural care because if the structural system is irritated, where the spine is locked up and not moving independently, it can cause pressure at the upper portion of your neck in the middle between your shoulder blades. That all by itself will knock up your blood pressure. So there's many different pieces to it. So start with the magnesium. And the other thing that I would have you do is, is take a, a natural source of a whole vitamin B complex. And you don't want a heavy dose. Take a low dosage and take it a couple times a day, once in the morning and once about midday. If those three things don't do it, then there's more of a significant problem that you have to be you know, aware of. So don't waste too much time. Try it for about a week, 10 days, two weeks, and see if it begins to bring it down. Yeah, I currently have headaches, you know, on my neck. I had a neck uh, tested with a chiropractor yesterday, and I saw those red, uh, ma you know, where those um, <clears throat> vertebrates are. Correct. I think it's see something. I can't remember what. He didn't give me a copy. And I do, I, I, I'm not sleeping well, and I feel that this lack of sleep is also, I wake up in the middle of the night. And, that'll, that'll add and to it, that absolutely. That will do it for the yes. blood pressure, I guess. Laura, don't waste. I mean, if, if it's a structural problem, it's, it's something that has to be dealt with. If we can help you, please let us know. Give our office a call. Uh, okay. if, if I can have, help you further, you can get a hold of me uh, through the website at resultcare.com, and I'll go back and forth with you. But let's do something about it. Laura, thank you for your call. I appreciate it very much. Frank, how can I help you, sir? We've got a, uh, about a minute and a half. I know that this is not up your alley in terms of... Um replacement disc surgery in um, lower back. You know, it says extensive, extensive disc disease, okay. broad-based disc bulge at the L5-S1. Okay, we do a lot of that work. Go ahead. And um, the other one is right-sided hemolonectomy at L5-S1, okay. mild degree of enhancement scar tissue. I had surgery 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the uh, laminectomy that they're talking about on the right side. Yeah, and then the disc bulge at L4-5 with abutment of the descending L5 nerve roots. Okay, question? Question is, what can you do for this? Quite a bit, actually. We have patients who have very serious stenosis. Let me, let me give you a statistic. Anybody that has been scheduled, you take 100% of patients across the board who have been scheduled for surgery with your type of uh, demonstration, and 60% of them can be dealt with conservatively if it's done properly. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. I am 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you on any subjects. I've got a few, and we've got some callers. Please give me a call. We'll talk about your issues today. Frank, thank you for holding. Let's talk a little bit about that spinal stenosis and disc bulges and degeneration that yes. you've got going. Uh, Dr. Ozell? Yes, sir. I've been a patient of Dr. Sims. Yes, sir. At your clinic, and um, 
what I wanted to say, a couple of years ago, this thing got on my nerves. I went to a chiropractor nearer to me, yep. and I went through a decompression and a whole set of tens and everything. Okay. And that lasted for about a year and a half. Okay. And it's, now it's absolutely excruciating. All right. So I, I, that gives you some idea of where I've been in terms of some of the chiropractic treatments. Okay, and well, surgery. let me add this to you. Okay, there's there's multiple things that you have to do depending on how st extensive the condition is. Mm -hmm. Let me relate this to you. I have in my low back three areas of uh, previously diagnosed spinal stenosis and degeneration. Mm -hmm. And I, has, I have two very large, at, the, at that time, herniated discs. And I've never been treated with anything other than chiropractic care, but also acupuncture and also nutrition. Now, you have to interrelate the rest. I can function, I can do, I messed myself up about a month ago or so in the gym because I tried to be a hero again. I think I was 20 years old. But having said that, these guys have got me back out of the problem again, and I'm you know, doing well. But here's, here's the issue. You've got to change the chemistry as well as changing the compression within the structure system itself. If the body's acidic, you're going to start uh, producing inflammatory levels that are so high that nothing can truly heal. The tissue can't change. Stenosis comes about as a result of soft tissue stenosis and narrowing. It comes as a result of the disc itself being degenerative and narrowing the canal where the nerve comes out. Mm -hmm. And it comes as a result of calcium forming around the hole where the nerve comes out. So it depends on the type. Now, you've got a couple of different issues. You've got a stenosis due to probably several of these things, and you've got disc herniation and compression. So first of all, obviously, you have to decompress. You have to open it up. But at the same time, you have to accentuate the healing process process within the joint space. You've got to uh, change the chemistry. The body has to go alkaline. If your body goes alkaline, for the most part, what you do is you actually will begin to reabsorb some of the calcification. You have to also strengthen the core around it. And this isn't something you do just at the time. This is lifetime. This is once you've got the massive problems that you have, once you get to the place where it's, it's, uh, you're, you're feeling a whole lot better and you've got some strength, you can't change the dietary pattern. You can't change the exercise. And periodically, you've got to get chiropractic care. Now, to do that, you can live very, very well. If I showed you my films, I should have been down on my knees years ago and never able to practice. But I've had 35 years of very successful practice. And as you know, I'm over a table all day long. Mm. I'm a crazy man. I start at 6 o'clock in the morning. I go late tonight. And... I can function because I, my primary value in my life is my health, and I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that I maintain my health. You know, I, I watch what I eat. I'm a crazy person about that. I don't mess around, you know, with the food that goes in. I make sure that I exercise regularly from the point of doing Tai Chi, Tai Chi Guan, and uh, core training exercise and so forth, and I get treated on a regular basis. So for me, that's, that's an imperative. It's, it's something that I don't uh, marginalize and I, no, I don't negotiate it. But based on what you're telling me, unless I saw something different, uh, I would say to you that you need to put those pieces together, and I think that you'll get the results long term. Where we get in trouble sometimes is that we begin to look at our problems and think that there's a magic wand, particularly when they're long-term like you have. And uh, if you put all the rest of it together and maintain it and shift, and I think that you'll, you'll be happily surprised that it can be turned around. Well, the other question is, uh, what portion does Medicare pay for in this type of thing? Medicare is lousy, and it's going to get worse over time. Yeah. What they pay for is they pay for straight spinal work. They don't pay for the other pieces. Uh, years, uh, seven, eight years ago, they paid for acupuncture. They don't pay for acupuncture. Not, they don't even pay for nutrition anymore. The only time that they pay for nutrition if it's uh, diabetes related. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they don't pay for uh, any of the other pieces. Uh, they, you know, th they limit. That's why with this Obamacare thing, because everything is going to be structured under the Medicare guidelines and rules, that you have 40% of physicians that are going to check out immediately. They're done because of the paperwork, because of the demand of, of all kinds of things. So, but our job in our practice is to make care affordable, and we do set up all kinds of, of uh, different structures to, to, uh, to help you with that. Frank, if we can do anything to do that, get a hold of us. If finances uh, are an issue, uh, give our office a call, and they'll hook you up with the person that you need to talk to. And, but we can help you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for Dr. calling, Rosal. Frank. I appreciate it.
Debbie, how can I help you? Uh, yes, I have an 86-year-old father who's on a whole bunch of pretty potent pills, and I was um, trying to find out if some of them can be replaced with alternative natural uh, pills instead. What's he taking? Uh, well, one of the one I'm most interested in, do you want to hear everything he's taking? How many has he got on? Uh, probably 10 or 12. Oh, God. Um, yeah, give me, at first give me the categories. What is he taking them for? Um, everything under the sun. Okay, uh, heart, heart disease, blood pressure, cholesterol. Everything, yep. Okay, so he's got the uh, the magic elixirs that they're giving him. Yep, Travitan, glim, Glimepiride, Glyburide, Digoxin, Warfarin, Fusuramide, Simvastin, Metropol, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the, the, the pills themselves are killing him. Oh, I, I know that. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to work on it. The first one I want, I'm, he's on Flomax, and I'm thinking there's got to be a natural one for that. Okay, so he's got prostate function problems, but here's the deal. The rest of the stuff that he's taking as well is adding to the prostate problem. Prostate problems in men generally are due to inflammatory reactions. Prostate is 50, and the dry weight is 50% zinc. And as we get older because of stress patterns and we don't eat properly, we don't eat the, the, uh, the grains and the vegetables and so forth that we should be eating, the zinc levels begin to decrease and because of stress patterns, inflammatory levels go high, zinc levels go down. Now, having said that, uh, there's things like saw palmetto, alanine. Uh, it depends on the patient and what you want to give them. Uh, saw palmetto in a liquid concentrate form. Generally, whatever the dosage is on the, on the liquid, on the herbal liquid, you double the dosage and you give it three times a day. That that can help uh, sometimes, uh, which you have to be careful with is if anybody has an allergic response to that. But there's more. I would give him zinc. I would start with the sulfate form of zinc, zinc sulfate. I would give him approximately 50 milligrams three times a day, no more than that. And the combination of the, those two may help. Uh, Acupuncture helps dramatically for uh, for prostate problems, but you have to look at the whole body. Again, I go back to neurology and the acid base levels of the of the body. The body has to be alkaline, and there has to be neurological integrity within within the, within the system. The low back, the nerves that come out of the fifth disc space, the low back is the S1 nerve root. It goes to the prostate, oh. and if those nerves are irritated, the prostate's not going to function. I have guys that come in in their 40s, and they have tremendous low back pain and sciatica, and we treat them, and the back pain goes away, and then about seven, eight weeks, nine weeks into it, they, uh, they'll say to me, you know, you know, I didn't say anything initially, Doc, but you know, I've had some, and I say erectile uh, dysfunction problems. I said, yeah. And I said, so what's the deal? I said, well, it's better. Could that have anything to do with my back? Well, the short answer is, uh-huh. And it's because the we forget about the nervous system. The nervous system is paramount. It's king. And those nerves come out of the spine and they divide. Part of it goes to muscle tissue. Part of it goes to organ system. When the trunk of the nerve is irritated, then not only do we feel muscle pain or loss of function or numbness, but we also can get loss of function to the organ that it's going to. So you look at all of those pieces, the energetics to the body, the acupuncture system, if it's not balanced, the body can't heal. If the blood system isn't carrying proper nutrients and it's highly inflamed, it's irritated, it's burning, it's going to shut the system down. So if you look at the body and you look at somebody and where they are right now, you say, why? Why are they there? What's happened? Injury, disease, pathology, symptoms, leaves a very, very focused trail if you're willing to go back and take a look at what the patient's done, the decisions that they've made about their health. And the good news is, is that you can change any time. The hardest thing is to do is to get somebody to change and accept the idea that they actually have control. Now, with, with, with uh, statins, um, depends on what the, the cholesterol levels are and the inflammatory levels. Cholesterol is not the problem in arterial placking. It's the inflammation. The body responds trying to put the inflammation out, which is acidic, by putting plaque on it. So you can have a really low cholesterol, and the body's going to use that fat to plaque up the system to try to dampen the burn. And so, But they give cholesterol medications. The other night, I gave a, a really fun lecture Wednesday night to a group of about 40 people up at a, a retirement center in Maryland. And I had a ball. And you know, one of the things that I told them is that you know, you're, if you're on cholesterols and statins, it's, it's not about the, the level of cholesterol. You have to treat, and here's an actual, absolute data. You have to treat 100 men with a statin for five years to prevent one heart attack. 
I mean, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's many different ways. So what are the ways? Your, your fish oils, niacin, uh, the uh, red yeast rice, or red rice yeast, I'm sorry, uh, coenzyme Q10, uh, vitamin E, particularly the succinate form. There's a lot of things that can be done. The r physicians freak because they say, well, this stuff can't be monitored. It's because the drug companies control what they do. It, it's a, you know it's about what drug works. It's not about what nutrition. They just came out of a great thing the other day that freeze dried strawberries. Now they're admitting to it in the medical community can actually stop, heal, and reverse esophageal cancer. Wow! I mean high levels of antioxidants. I mean that's all it is, and it's in a very very highly deliverable form. So when you begin to look, if the patient is willing, they're willing to change and do what they need to get done. The body is extremely forgiving. Cells replace them some, uh, themselves, and you can change almost anything. Mm -hmm. If I can help you further, Debbie, there's a lot that can be done. Um, you know, we, uh, write me at Result Care, and I'll ask you all kinds of questions about your dad. I, I'm not going to tell you to take him off the of medications. I'm going to tell you what would work nutritionally, and then I'm going to try to give you somebody. I, know, I see you're out in uh, Bristow. Yeah, actually, my father's in, in, down in Florida, and I had to, I'd have to bring him up here. Okay, where does he live in Florida? Um, he lives around Avon Park and then sometimes up in Summerfield. Is anywhere close to uh, St. Petersburg? Mm, no. All right. Well, we'll go back and forth, and if I can get a referral for you, I'll do that too. Okay. Thank you very much. Deb, thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Fred, how can I help you, sir? Thank you for calling. Uh, doctor, first a request, uh, and that is that you spell those different things that you like, magnesium, glycemate, and that maybe you post them on your website, uh, you know, all the ones that you've recommended. You're trying to give me some more work, aren't you, Fred? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll do that for you. The uh, second thing is, uh, uh, are there any supplements that I should be taking to help uh, kidney and liver function? Actually, springtime is the time that you should think about liver and uh, gallbladder and so forth. You know, we've gone through the winter, right? And the body is the time. It's actually springtime is the right time to clean out anything. And the liver has been congested, and we've got all kinds of pollutions. We haven't had any vitamin D in our body. So here's the thing: the liver is responsible for creating bile, and you know it, and stowing, uh, stowing it in the gallbladder. The liver also creates fat and protein packets that can be transported throughout the body. And uh, it helps in the meta metabolism of protein. It stores fat in vitamins and iron and B12 and uh, in addition to carbohydrates. So here's the deal. We need to be able to detoxify the liver. So what do you need to do about that? All right. So you need to first clean your diet out. You need to uh, make sure that you're eating lots and lots of fresh vegetables. Don't fry them. Don't bread them but you need to steam them. You can stir fry quickly if you want to. You can pressure cook them, you, uh, things of that nature. But you need to get about five to seven um, servings of, of uh, vegetables per day. Now, once you do that, you want to get clean water and you want to drink a whole bunch. That means half your body weight minimum every day in water. You want to get rid of anything that is not organic. You want to make sure that you get a little bit of fruit, meaning one serving. A serving is a half a cup of fruit a day. Don't overload it because that's fructose, and fructose in high levels is not great for you. Vitamin B complex uh, will help metabolize the fat. Choline uh, is super important. It helps in, in repairing cell membranes and methyl... Wait, what was that, the choline? Choline, C-H-O-L-I-N-E. And you want to uh, get that into your diet. You want uh, Choline, by the way, is, is part of lecithin. So if you can't find choline, you do lecithin. Uh, it's also found in eggs, the, the egg yolk actually in brewer's yeast, beans. And um, it helps with neurological function in the body. So that's where you begin. Fred, I'm sorry I don't have the time. i got to take a break. I will see if I can uh, post it on the website. Go to uh, Facebook. You can go right through our website and do that. And go to Rizal Center for Healing. You don't have to have an account on Facebook. You can get it through us. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. I've been live at 888 wmal and it's been an active, active afternoon. So much for epigenetics and psychoneuroimmunology, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to post it on not only our website, but I'm going to go to Facebook. So remember what you can do. You can go to Roselcare. Dot com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E dot com. And if you go down to the lower right-hand side of the web page, you're going to see Find Us on Facebook. And here's the good news. You don't have to have a Facebook account. All you got to do is click Facebook Social Plugin, and you can go right into that site. 
and I will tonight start talking about epigenetics, and I will talk about a little bit more of it throughout the week. Okay? That's my deal to you. And I will try to post more things that are specific. Like I said, Fred is trying to make more work for me, but I will do my best because I'm here to help you in any possible way that I can possibly help you. That's why we do Dr. Tom Rosell Live. That's why we have the Rosell Center for Healing, and that's why in September, September the 17th, we're doing our annual Ageless Health this year, 2011, creating a new you. And this is, you know, this is an event that you really don't want to miss. If you want to go away with how to change things, you need to show up for this. This year, what we've done, instead of leaving lunch up to you, we have got a vendor who is going to provide for you as part of your registration fee organic lunch so we know what you're going to get we're not taking a chance anymore we're going to make sure that you get the kind of food that we want you to get and uh, all you need to do is to register is to go to rosellcare.com or call our office at 703-698-7117 do it soon the advertising is going to hit real quick now, and once that starts, we're going to be sold out. We've sold out event every year. We've had people that we've said, I'm sorry, we're full, we can't get you. We've added a few more seats this year, but not many. So please take advantage of it. Register early. Make sure that you have the opportunity to learn from some of the best clinical minds around. We start out that day every year with core training exercise. That will be in the morning. It will be on stage. And then at noon when we break, you're going to have the opportunity to watch a presentation of Tai Chi Guan, which is one of the most beautiful things that anybody can do. Uh, please attend and take advantage of that. You're going to have vendors there that are going to show you what's new in the integrative healthcare community. But more importantly, you're going to walk away with the notes that are very applicable to your every lifestyle and every choice that you make relative to your health. I'm here every Sunday trying to be a little controversial, very supportive, and deliver the best information I possibly can so you can change your health. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. I'll see you next week at 12 noon. Bye. Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rosell. If you're looking for a wellness and healthcare environment to showcase your business, products, and services, consider being a wellness partner of Dr. Tom Rosell Live and the Rosell Center for Healing. From in-show advertising to on-site events and digital marketing, we have several offerings that can highlight your business with a well-received and established audience. For more information, visit WMAL.com, keyword Roselle, that's R-O-S-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and click on Become a Sponsor. Health is a do-it-yourself program. That's reality and the title of my new book. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. Health is a do-it-yourself program is a most understandable introduction to natural health care. My book will take you step-by-step step through why the body breaks down and gets sick, but also how it repairs itself. You will finally understand the often confusing world of natural care. Order it today by going to Amazon.com or from our website, RoselleCare.com. That's RoselleCare.com. Did you know that routine mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest x-ray? Now consider a simple, non-invasive, and totally safe medical procedure approved by the FDA since 1982 that can detect breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect the initial signs of breast cancer as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call the Thermography Center of Fairfax to schedule a breast exam today at 703-948-7248. That's 703-943-7248. For more information, visit www.thermographyscan.net. That's thermographyscan.net for the Thermography Center of Fairfax. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup.